All right. Good morning. So we have uh, our, our normal agenda for you uh, packed with, uh, we have a couple of Lightning Talk speakers. I want to share with you some information about what we've accomplished since the last summit. And then different from previous Working Breakfast, um, instead of creating lists of things that we want to do be between now and the next summit, we're just going to have a discussion. Um, because one of the things we want to facilitate here um, is networking and you increasing your network. And this is the feedback we get from these sessions. Historically, it is the, the best part of this um, is the connections you make with each other in those round-the-table sessions at the end. So that's what we really want to focus on this, after, uh, this morning, um, afternoon in, in uh, the United States, but uh, this morning. And um, again, welcome. My name is Jessica Marillo. I work at IBM, and I'm very proud that we're able to sponsor um, this working breakfast and um, look forward to uh, what we have to share with you this morning. So we're going to see the results of our, uh, you can think of it kind of as our, as our mid-cycle uh, uh, survey. It was a quick demographic survey that I sent out to the women of OpenStack list as well as our LinkedIn list. Um, just five questions, wanted to get some feedback on uh, who you are or who we are as a women of OpenStack community. Um, you know, what is important to us and that what we want to, who do we want to partner with going forward? So uh, similar to past, to past uh, summits, we have um, done a lot. Um, the mentor program, I hope several, I see some familiar faces from yesterday. Hopefully um, several have heard about our speed mentoring session we had yesterday, sponsored by Intel. Thank you very much. Um, and that is really to support our overall mentoring program that we, that we put into place um, over the past year. So um, in addition to our mentoring program, we also support Lunch and Learns, and that's sponsored by the Women of OpenStack, and it's for both women and men. So that's another program that we sponsor. And we also had a panel discussion yesterday afternoon um, titled, PTLs and Cores Were Not As Scary As You Think, um, that Amy Ukasik uh, was, <laughs> and Lana was, Lana was on as well. Um, it, was, uh, it was a good session, and hopefully we'll get the, uh, the tape, the videotape of that um, on the Women of OpenStack Wiki so you can see it if you weren't able to attend in person. Um, other things we continue to look at is, you know, what are the engagement uh, activities we want to have at Summit? Um, so, for example, um, the mentoring uh, breakfast, you know, this breakfast, um, we sponsored a kind of a booth area at the uh, Marketplace Mixer on Monday night. So we got to uh, kind of continue, you know, each day have an opportunity to come together. You'll also see out in the lunchroom um, women of OpenStack tables. So feel free to come and uh, sit there and also use that as an opportunity to come together throughout the week. Um, and for those of you who don't know, we do meet on a very regular basis on Mondays. Um, every other Monday, we're talking about you know, how we want to continue that going into the next year. Um, but we do have phone calls. Um, you can, if you search for the Women of OpenStack Wiki, you can see when the next phone call is scheduled. It's in November. And so that's another way for us to stay connected in between the summits. So I talked a little bit about the demographic survey. We'll see those results next. Um, we'll have a few lightning talks. And again, the focus of today is going to be on these small group networking sessions. So how many of you took the survey that I sent out a week or two ago, a couple weeks ago? Yes. We had 83 responses. I was so excited. I was hoping for 50. The first time we did this um, prior to the Paris Summit in, I think it was 2013, we had you know, around 30 people, 30, 35 people uh, respond. And so what you'll see here on the screen is um, it, it, we had 83 respondents, um, but I allowed people to uh, identify with multiple roles. So for you engineers in the room, and I know you're doing this behind me, you're counting up and saying that, that equals more than 100, 100%. And it does, it does. Um, but use those, those uh, percentages, think of those more kind of like weighted, 
kind of uh, kind of weights, right? Because um, of the 83 respondents, um, we had 136 roles. So the majority of the women of OpenStack identify with contributing or reviewing code. That's about 60. Yay! <laughs> Um, and then the next group is running OpenStack software, which is around 30, 30%, 30 kind of the weighted average. And then, uh, and then that's kind of followed by product people who are working, women um, are working in product management or business development roles and marketing. But you can kind of see from that infographic here, we um, come from all different walks, right? The other question I asked on the survey was, you know, how many summits have you attended? And you can see from this, um, this uh, the chart, there are quite a few women who responded to the survey who follow the women of OpenStack who have not attended a summit yet. Or maybe they've attended one or two summits. So what that tells me is we have to do a lot out, we have to do more um, in those monthly calls or through, um, you know, electronic com digital communications through the wiki to reach these women who are not able to travel to the summit. But you'll see um, the numbers there. And then the good news is 75% um, have attended a Woman of OpenStack event, either, um, either a call or it could be here at the summit. Another question I included is, where should we focus our efforts? And you'll see our next speakers who come up and talk to us this morning um, that are going to reinforce um, some of these focus areas. The, the number one response back was building your network. That's what women of OpenStack want assistance with. They want us to help them with. Um, the second was education and technical workshops. The third was leadership training, and fourth was mentoring and coaching. And I have to tell you, you know, looking back to the survey that we did in Paris, these are, these are very similar. Um, these are the focus areas that, that we've had discussions with in these working breakfasts. You know, time and time again, these are the top you know, three or four areas that we should focus. So. We got started a little late this morning, so I want to go, go ahead and um, introduce our speakers. So the format will be, we are going to have two lightning talk speakers who will come up and talk about slightly different topics, but you'll see how they kind of play to where the women of OpenStack want to uh, see more information and education. And then we're going to break up and do some small group networking. And again, I'm not looking for you to write a list of stuff to do. Um, but I, what I'd like for you to do is have the conversation on the table, you know, so listen to what these ladies are talking about because that's going to be the focus of your small table, table group discussion. So let me bring up Nithya. It's okay to clap. <laughs> Nithya is the director um, for Western Digital, used to be SanDisk, open source and CTO office, and she's going to share with us some work that she was doing with Baturgia on using OpenStack contribution analysis um, and analytics to help drive diversity. This one? On the side oh. right there. Yep. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks, Jessica. Jessica's done such a wonderful job of leading this group and uh, hosting the breakfast meetings, so I'd like to give a big hand uh, to Jessica. Um, and also the bi-weekly meetings as well. Um, the, you can't do without, you know, people in the back doing that. Okay, so let me see if I can do this correctly. Okay, I'll use my hands. <laughs> so um, I think it was back in OpenStack Tokyo that I published on Twitter a number uh, based on what I heard from the OpenStack staff, which said that we had something like 11% or 12% attendance at the conference. And then I got a return tweet back saying, uh, so how many of that 12% are women and contributing to the code analysis? And unbeknownst to me, Daniel um, is, is Ada of, of Bitergia, my partner in crime on this, um, actually took the pains to analyze the data and present at Austin. 
So he actually did a metrics talk at Austin, which was very, very well attended, which said uh, this is the percentage of code contributions made by women, you know, through the history of OpenStack and also in the latest, you know, release of OpenStack. And he also did an analysis of uh, people, code reviews done by women, which I thought was fantastic. And it was very encouraging. We got a lot of questions. And so uh, we thought, Daniel and I thought, let's present some you know, data based on Austin to Barcelona, what's happened, and also give you some sense of you know, how women are doing on this. We have a handout for you, which we'll give out uh, shortly. But let me also end by saying we want this report to spark conversations, to really give you a chance to say, uh, what should we do better? Uh, how can we learn from projects that are doing well? Um, and what else should we measure? Because at the end of the day, what gets measured gets done. And we need to set goals in terms of what we want to do from a participation perspective. Um, and there's nothing like data to spur the discussion on. So this is just scratching the surface what we'll share with you today. So what Biturgia has done is create a really good um, takeaway for you. And you'll see that um, on, on a stack in that table there. So we'll, we'll distribute those if you want that handout. Let me, let me start by code contributions themselves. Um, historically, as you can see from the beginning of OpenStack till now, 2010 to 2016, it's been steadily growing for women, which is awesome. And it stands at about 10.83% today. And um, that's, that's not a bad number, but it could improve. And it's been around 10.83, for quite some time now. Then when you look at code reviews, it's a little bit uh, higher. 10.85% of women are doing code reviews, um, which is not bad. As far as mailing list is concerned, there's 9.07% uh, percent participating in the mailing list. I'll just give you some perspective. Daniel and his company did an analysis of the Linux kernel and what the contributions to the Linux kernel are for the Linux Foundation. It was around 9% historically, or growing up to 9%. So OpenStack is doing really well. It's, it's much higher than the 9%. But I think it could go much, much higher. If you look at the representation of women in technology, it's generally about 20% in a company. Um, and we think that it should really aim for 20% or higher uh, from a contribution perspective. So Jessica will tee up some questions towards the end for discussion in terms of what else should we measure, what can we learn from the projects that people contribute to, and uh, how can we do better. Just to point out, some of the top projects are documentation. And I was talking to Lana about what is she doing that's, uh, that's causing you know, so many women to participate in documentation. Um, and partly, she said to me, it's not the pipeline. You know, we don't have a pipeline issue in documentation. Uh, we have a good representation in technical documentation. Uh, also, I think it's, it's her leadership style. She's inclusive. She makes people feel welcome. That's, that's an important element, and we'd like to kind of replicate it in other projects. And then you can see Nova Neutron Infrastructure Quality Assurance. Those were the other projects that were uh, really good. So with that, I think I'll pass it off to Holly and uh, Jessica to do their lightning talk, and then we'll come back and do the discussion, and uh, also distribute the infographic to you. Good morning, everybody. How are you on this bright and early day? So my name is Holly Bazemore. I'm the director of strategy and um, deployments for all of Comcast Clouds. Um, I wanted to talk to you briefly this morning before we get started on our exercise about the importance of networking. Um, studies show statistically that jobs found through referral or you know, somebody you know based on networking tend to lead to happier people in their jobs as well as longer standing time in seat for those positions. Why is this important? Because if you're ever out there and you're looking for a role or you're thinking about changing companies, one of the things you should be focused on is happiness, right? So when you're, when you're looking at 
where do I want to go for a job, or hey, I need a job now. If you're just getting started on your networking pipeline at that point, you're probably already a little bit behind the eight ball. And so one of the things I like to remind people of is networking is something that you're doing every single day, whether you're aware of it or not. So as you go through and you meet with people at work, you meet with people outside of work, you come to these functions, make sure that you take time to get, know, to get, to get to know people around you. Some of the things that you want to focus on when you meet new people is get them talking, right? Networking doesn't always have to be your elevator speech. Networking does not always have to be the five-minute pitch. It's so important for you to understand what I work on right now, right? The real element of networking is making a connection with somebody else because that's what they're going to remember about you when you walk away. They may not necessarily remember that you work on this widget at this place in XYZ, but they are going to remember if you and they manage to connect on something and they'll say, you know, I think I remember talking to somebody that might be interested in that. Let me go back and look and reach out to that person, right? And this is how, when I sit down to look for, for a position to fill, um, on my teams, I go back and I think about who are passionate people that I think are playing in XYZ space and I just start reaching out to them, right? So when you come to an event like this and we sit down and we start talking, try to connect with people. Don't necessarily be top of mind trying to push the agenda of what you're working on. What are they doing? What makes them passionate? If you can get a real dialogue going, these will be the folks that you will remember, you will reconnect with them over and over again as you see them throughout the industry. And that industry here, as you well know, is worldwide. One of the other things that you should take away as you go is when you do meet somebody in an event, right? I know we've spent a lot of time over the years in a lot of these tools, talk, uh, a lot of these meetings specifically, talking about what tools we use, right? I think LinkedIn is one we've covered a few times. It's very important that after you meet people that you touch, you know, reach back out and touch base with them in a timely manner, right? If I meet you today and you wait two weeks to reach back out to me, I have probably forgotten our conversation unless you really got me excited about something, right? But if you reached out to me tonight or tomorrow night, you know, when you're back in your hotel room winding down at the end of the night and you shoot me that LinkedIn request and say, hey, Holly, you remember we talked really quickly about Neutron or Great Danes or Sunsets, whatever, right? I'm going to be like, oh, I really enjoyed the time I spent with that person. Yeah, let's stay connected on LinkedIn. And the next time I hear from you or you hear from me, we'll remember that little connection, right? Be like, remember we talked way back in Austin? We sat down and we talked about the armadillos we saw at breakfast. Yeah, yeah, weren't you working on Neutron, right? But these are the things that kind of trigger things in our memory, right? It's all about that, that instant connection you make. So when we go through the, the activities that we're about to go through, Stop, take a minute, look the person in the eye, right? This isn't, this isn't a race. Take time to be thoughtful with the people that you are spending some of that precious time with and make a connection with them. And then when you leave here, reach back out to them in a timely manner. And the next thing you know, your pipeline will grow bigger and bigger and bigger. So enjoy your time here. I'm gonna pass this back to Jessica. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Holly. Thank you. So as you were entering, Emily was handing out cards. Did everyone get a card? If you didn't get a card, Emily has a card for you. Okay, so this is the user participation part of the, of the, uh, of the session. You're going to love it. Now, if you've already had breakfast, breakfast you might want to push your breakfast dishes up to the, the middle of the table. You'll see up here there will be numbered pumpkins or ghouls. You'll see like little ghosts. So if you have a, a, a playing card that has a one on it, you need to come to the number one table over here. If you have a playing card with a two on it, you need to come to the number two table. You know, you guys can follow along, right? Yes, yes. And while you're moving, I'm going to ask you to do two things. Move and remember what your card was. Because we have two books here. Um, I think these are, are these signed as well? No. Maybe we can get um, Elizabeth Joseph to sign. So this is a woman of OpenStack 
who has written a book. And so this book is going to go to the person who has the six of diamonds. You get a book. Yes, come on down. Come on down. You get a book. Score. There you go. Awesome. Thank you. All right, keep going. You were doing so well. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so we have just we have just a couple of rules. It's great that you're already interacting already. That's awesome. Okay, so it looks like you're already starting, but I would like everyone is the first part of the exercise to go around your table and answer these three questions. Okay. And then after you answer these three questions, I have some other questions that our, our uh, Lightning Talk speakers have provided that can help invoke additional discussion. So th to start the discussion, you need to start with, my name is fill in the blank. I'm sure you all can do this. I know it's really early, but hopefully you had caffeine. All right. So in OpenStack, I work on fill in the blank. And then the third question is, my dream job is you fill in the blank. So we're going to have 30 minutes. Talk amongst yourselves, but start with these three questions.
I hate to break up the discussion. But they are going to be using this room, I think, for overflow for the keynotes. And I want to give you guys plenty of time to get to the keynotes. So I just have a couple of wrap-up thoughts. But I first want to hear from you guys. How do you think this format went? Did you like it? Yay! And, and my second question, how would you like, instead of doing this at breakfast at 7 o'clock in the morning, if we did it at lunch? Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> so um, hopefully in Boston we will have the ability to do that. A lot of it's dependent on the location and the facilities, but um, from talking to the foundation, we're, we're hoping to move this for uh, to have a w women's uh, OpenStack lunch, working lunch in Boston. So kind of stay tuned for that. So I hope everyone got contact information. They had they made a connection with their table group. Um, but we want you to try to stay engaged. So if you're not already subscribed to the Women of OpenStack mailing list, please do so. Um, if you want to find the Women of OpenStack, you can just search uh, Women of OpenStack Wiki. You will see our mailing list. You will see our list of meetings. Um, it's all there on the wiki. Uh, we do everything through Etherpad. Um, we'd love for you to join us at our next meeting and uh, also sign up to be a uh, facilitator for a meeting. One of the things that we're going to try um, coming up is rather than being, so, uh, you know, many of our planning sessions um, in the meeting, we use our meetings kind of as planning sessions for the summit. What we're going to try to do is create more of an editorial calendar um, in the kind of the November time frame to have speakers come in at least one of the meetings a month um, to help kind of balance out some of our planning with some of the educational training um, activities and opportunities we want to give the women of OpenStack. Um, our next meeting? Absolutely, yeah. So we'll Okay, great. Awesome. Awesome. So we have a lot of good ideas on how we want to continue to use that forum to connect between the summits. Our next call is November 14th. Um, and then we just want to make sure that you continue to reach out to the, your t not only your table group, but also the Women of, Stack, uh, the Women of OpenStack Mentoring Program is an another great opportunity. You can find more information about that on our wiki as well. And uh, so we look forward to uh, seeing you for the rest of the summit. So thanks all.